It's once again time to put down our weekly application of Mitlider Weekly Feed. So today we're going to discuss mixing and applying the Mitlider Weekly Feed to your garden. Let's get set up and get started. Let's start by discussing what is actually in our weekly feed. The first thing that's in the weekly feed is fertilizer. That fertilizer contains our NPK, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate. In a mitlider garden, ideally our fertilizer is triple 16. You're not going to be able to find that everywhere, so a triple 13, a triple 15, or a triple 17 are also acceptable. These bags of fertilizer typically come in 50 pounds and you're going to find them in stores that sell bags of feed for folks with livestock. This is derived from a rock which is ground up. It is made into a particle size that we can utilize and put it into a bag. This is not made out of petroleum. It is not a man-made product. In addition to the fertilizer, you're going to need Epsom salt. It contains magnesium sulfate. You can buy this in larger bags at places like Walmart. You do not want to get Epsom salt that has additional ingredients like eucalyptus. Now the last ingredient in our weekly feed is going to be a bag of micronutrients. I'm not going to bore you to death and read off all the ingredients that are in the bag. I will show you a screenshot of it here. If you're truly interested, you can pause the video, go through, look at those items, and research them. There are two 10-ounce packets of these micronutrients that come in each bag of the Mitlider Magic Micromix. You can get these packets from the growfood.com site or you can also buy them off of the Walmart website and get them shipped right to your door. Each one of these packets has 10 ounces and is intended to be combined with 25 pounds of the fertilizer. The standard mixing instructions tells you to mix one of these 10 ounce packets of micronutrients with four pounds of Epsom salt, the magnesium sulfate, and 25 pounds of your fertilizer. Combine them, mix them thoroughly, and that is your weekly feed. To help cut down on the moisture that will be absorbed into this fertilizer once it's mixed, you can add a half pound of perlite to each 30 pound batch. We have a series of videos where we show you how to mix the weekly feed as well as the pre-plant. I'll put an i-card for you up here and also include a link to that video series in the description and I believe it's called Growing an Inexpensive Mitlider Garden. When you add the magnesium into your weekly feed mixture it immediately begins to absorb moisture out of the air. The longer it sits, the more moisture it absorbs, it gets really wet, it clumps, and it becomes difficult to apply into your garden. I did that for a couple of years, I fought with it, and I ended up doing something different. Before I get into that though, let me tell you of some alternative ways of trying to keep the moisture out of your weekly feed. Store it in a bucket that has an airtight lid. Gamma lids have a seal an o-ring on them to seal them up to prevent any air from getting into the bucket. You can store your bucket with your mixed fertilizer in a place such as your basement where it is a near constant temperature and you have a lower humidity level. If you're in a very humid area you're going to have a lot of moisture in the air and your weekly feed is going to absorb it and will become damp and clumpy very quickly. I've already told you about adding perlite. A half pound of perlite per 30 pound batch will help to cut down on the moisture in your weekly feed. Now, how I prefer to mix my weekly feed each week. I have combined 
25 pounds of my fertilizer with the 10 ounces of the micronutrients. I mix those thoroughly and I've got them stored in this bucket that you see on the left, the blue bucket with a black lid. Each week when it's time to feed the garden, I will take a measured amount of the mix out of the bucket, add the Epsom salt, mix it together, and then apply it directly into the garden. By doing this, the weekly feed stays dry, it's easy to apply into the garden, and it doesn't become a wet, soppy mess. Now if we go back to our mixing instructions, to the 25 pounds of fertilizer we're going to add the 10 ounces of micronutrients. To that we would have added 4 pounds of Epsom salt. So to calculate how many pounds of the weekly feed and micronutrients I need for 1 pound of Epsom salt, I just divided 25 pounds and 10 ounces by 4. That comes down to about 6 pounds and 4 ounces of the fertilizer and micronutrients. I will add 1 pound of magnesium sulfate. You can determine how much of this you're going to need on a weekly basis by calculating the total number of feet in your garden. For example, we have 4 30-foot grow boxes in here. I have 120 linear feet of grow box. We apply the weekly feed at a rate of half an ounce per foot. So we're going to need 60 ounces of weekly feed to feed all of the plants in the greenhouse. Going to my calculator, I see that I need 3.75 pounds of weekly feed to feed the four beds in the greenhouse. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take three pounds and two ounces of the fertilizer that has been mixed with the micronutrients. I'm going to take that bucket and I'm going to shake it up really good to distribute all of the nutrients throughout the fertilizer. Take three pounds, two ounces, measure it out on my scale, put it in the bucket. I'm going to take another container of Epsom salt and I'm going to weigh out eight ounces of it. Again, I'm halving my original calculation. Six pounds and four ounces of the fertilizer and micronutrients and one pound of magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salt. So to half that down to feed just my greenhouse, I'm going to put three pounds and two ounces of fertilizer and micronutrients in a bucket and then I'm going to half my magnesium sulfate from my original calculation. So I'm going to put eight ounces of magnesium sulfate in with that, mix it together, and I will end up with my weekly feed. Once your weekly feed is properly mixed up, it is ready to be applied to your garden. It is going to apply only to the area where we're growing food. The weekly feed is applied at half of an ounce per linear foot. Because each of my grow boxes is 30 feet long, I need 15 ounces of weekly feed to feed the plants that are in that grow box. To get our 15 ounces, we're just going to use an old green bean can. We're going to add 15 ounces by weight to that can. Walk along the grow box and sprinkle it into the garden. Jim Kennard has a really good video on applying this into your garden. And I'm going to put an eye card here for you and let you see him do it. Once you have 15 ounces in your can, assuming that you have a 30 foot grow box, walk along and evenly distribute those 15 ounces over the length of your 30 foot grow box. It's going to take you a few attempts to get good at distributing that 15 ounces evenly. If you get to the end of the grow box and you're a little bit short, it's okay to go back and get just a little more fertilizer to make sure that everything is fed. The more times that you do this, your proficiency will go up and it won't be an issue any longer. Now on days when it is windy outside, you need to be careful about holding that can too high above the garden. If you're holding that can too high when you're shaking out the weekly feed, 
the wind will grab those fine particles and it will blow it out of your garden. It will never make it to your plants. On days that are windy, you're really going to need to get down there with that can and make sure that it is all applied in your garden. After applying your weekly feed, you must water it in with a wand. We're doing this to dissolve the nutrients and to get them down to the roots. Automated systems, if you're running a drip line or something similar, there's not enough volume of water to moisten those particles and to get them to absorb into the soil. You have got to use the wand the first time to get those nutrients dissolved and into the soil. Until they get into the soil, they will never be available to the plant. At the end of the week, you're still going to see particles that you apply to your garden that will be on the top of the soil. Folks are concerned that their nutrients are not dissolving. That's not the case. The stuff that you're seeing on the top of your soil is a binder and a filler that is added to all the fertilizer. And allow it to be broadcast over a larger area for use in yards and commercial farming. Forgive me being free-handed, but I wanted to show this to you. I'm watering in my weekly feed, and I want to show you what I just found. I see these guys pretty regularly in our garden. And I'm having a hard time finding him in the viewfinder here, so I'm going to put my finger in. There he is. There's a tree frog. These guys are in here. All, where are you at, buddy? All the time. He's healthy. The Mint Lighter Weekly Feed is not hard on your garden. It's not hard on the environment. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.